If Team Fortress 2 could only receive one update in the rest of its life, what would you add? Ever since it was confirmed that there would be a new TF2 update of at least nominal size, this is a question that I've been thinking about a lot. So while I'm working on other projects, I think that this would be a very interesting topic to dissect. If TF2 could only receive another update, what types of things are necessary to add for the game to work? What types of things would add the most longevity to the game? And uh, what types of things would I personally like to see that I'm surprised aren't in the game after like 16 years? So here's my full list of everything that I think. If TF2 could get a single other update and it was confirmed that this was the final one and Valve would never touch the game again, what would I add? The only rules that I'll set for myself just to, to streamline things a little bit are number one, everything that I suggest has to be doable by Valve. So I can't say like, oh, I think that for the final update, TF2 should be the most played game on Steam. Like, I mean, Valve doesn't have control over that. This is just like things that Valve would realistically add in an update. And number two, I guess, yeah, make it like actual realistic. So while I could say, oh, well, for the final one, I think TF2 should be ported to Source 2. Valve can do that. That's a lot of work though, so they're not going to. This this should be like a realistic update that if Valve like took a year and actually spent time on, they actually could accomplish, but is like still within the realm of possibility. So with that in mind, here are all of my ideas for TF2's theoretical final update. The first thing that I'll start off with, because, I mean, obviously I have to put this somewhere, is bot fixes. Somehow, add an anti-cheat, add, like, ways for people to deal with the bots themselves. I don't really know. I don't want to spend too much time on this one because it's pretty obvious that, like, yes, if you're going to do an update, this is something everyone wants. But I'll add it here because, yeah, obviously you need to remove the bots for the game to be playable into the future. So while I think that there are plenty of things that should be added to Team Fortress 2 for the best gameplay experience, there are plenty of things that we have now that I think could use some tweaking. Most notably, every single game mode in the Find a Game menu I think could use some kind of change, if not a complete overhaul altogether. So the biggest thing to be changed out of all of these, in my opinion, is casual. Casual right now isn't too bad. It has its problems with bots, but if you remove the bots, I mean, it's a fine enough mode. The issue that both I and I think a lot of other people that I know have with casual though is that it doesn't really feel fun a lot of the time. Uh, the balance is pretty whack. It feels like some people are trying way harder than others. The game modes either stall out or finish extremely quickly, forcing you to requeue or just be locked in a stalemate forever. And there are plenty of issues just with that kind of balancing that I think would need to be fixed for TF2's what is essentially the main mode of the game to be, uh, to be in a playable state. What I'm suggesting is after five years or six years or however long of it being gone, we bring back Quick Play. For those of you who weren't around when Quick Play was a thing, imagine casual, but instead of having to queue for every match and then being kicked out as soon as it was done, you just clicked on a game and you joined instantly and then you were playing. I don't understand why Team Fortress 2 ever went away from this model. Quick Play was better in nearly every conceivable way. Casual was basically just a way to uh, update the game's feel to, to feel like other modern games. Uh, note that it came out around the same time as Overwatch, which had a very similar queuing system to get into uh, the casual mode. So now that we have the hindsight to look back on Overwatch and say that like, you know what, this type of game mode is not super great long term if we're not doing content updates, I think reverting to quick play is the most logical thing to do. What this means is a couple things. Number one, uh, the round system, instead of booting you out of the game and forcing you to requeue after someone wins a best of three. You join whatever server you want. Uh, the map has a 45 minute timer, which uh, can be adjusted as I'll get to in a bit. And then whenever that 45 minutes is up, the timer will be replaced with text that says map change on round end. I'm sure you've seen that before if you've ever been on a community server. And then when someone wins the round, uh, it goes back to the map voting system and you can vote on the next one you want to play. And then you play that one for 45 minutes. What this means is that you don't have to spend most of your time in casual in the queue system if you like maps that aren't literally the most popular ones. Um, the queuing system in general just isn't great. I understand that the point of it is that uh, it's preventing you from joining empty servers and making sure like, yeah, when you actually do get into a match, it has enough people to, uh, to run properly. But honestly, even servers that are like 8v8 or 6v6, like I find go fine. I don't think we need a full server to start a game every single time. And uh, I, personally, I would love to see it where you can just play on a map for as long as you want. And then if you don't like the map, you can either start a vote to uh, to like change to the next level, or you can just join a new server that uh, hopefully will be more populated as I'll get to in a bit. 
but uh, that is the most important one, I think. If we only had to change one thing with casual, it's just please remove the best of three. I, it's so stupid that you have to spend so much time just waiting to get into a match when this system already existed and was taken out of the game for basically no reason. The other benefit that bringing back quick play would have is that if you want to play with a friend and you're already in a match and your friend isn't, you don't have to completely requeue and uh, try to get into a different match. Uh, your friend can just drop in if there's an empty space. I Again, I don't know why this isn't a feature we still have in the game. Uh, the quick play system was superior in most conceivable aspects, so the fact that this isn't there is very, very disappointing. And the other huge change that I think casual would benefit from a ton is the voting system. Uh, there used to be a ton of votes back in the day. Instead of the only meaningful vote just being a vote kick, there also exists like built-in features of the game where you can vote for what you want the next map to be, which I think like because casual already lets you pick from like one of three random maps, I'm not sure how useful this would be. Um, I know uh, an exclamation point nominate is something that exists on a lot of community servers, but uh, just because you only get three things to choose from in casual again, I'm not sure that would be amazing. So I feel like those three slots would fill up very quickly just by whoever can get there first. Um, uh, being able to vote to scramble teams was amazing. And also having teams automatically scramble if it's a roll uh, is something that I think the 45-minute map timer or however long would benefit from immensely. Uh, not having to, again, just like re if you get rolled. It's like, yeah, you know that you're only suffering through a few rounds and then the game will mix it up and hopefully the teams will be more fair. That's how it worked for years and years and we don't have that anymore for whatever reason. So bringing that back, I think, would solve a lot of the balance issues that Casual currently has. And also, just in case you run into the scenario where it's like, okay, uh, the last group of people voted to uh, to change to a map that the current group of people doesn't like, you should be, after like 10 or 15 minutes of playing on the new map, be able to call a force next level vote. I think, again, community servers call this rock the vote. Um, I think the official vote that you can call is like change level. And uh, just, again, whenever it passes, immediately like goes on to the select the next map screen. That would be hugely beneficial and that would help casual flow significantly better than it does now. You can see the common theme with all of these changes is that it's making casual casual, I guess. Uh, right now, casual feels like a weird in between like a casual and a competitive mode. And I've never really liked the way that it's set up. It's like if this truly is casual and there are no stakes for me winning or losing, why am I getting punished for like leaving a match? Like why, why can't I have like friends drop in? Uh, it's never really made sense to me. And uh, I think Having these changes, basically, again, just bringing back quick play, would help the longevity of casual feel way better. The one benefit that I think the casual mode did bring is that it removed the ability to queue into community servers because a lot of community servers run plugins that even though they're like on the stock TF2 maps, which is I think all it really checked for, um, I don't really want to play, if I'm playing casual, I don't really want to play on a server that's like RTB enabled or has like all of these weird like custom models or uh, like has the MOTD ads. Like when I, when I queue into casual, I want to play on a Valve supported server and uh, that's the one change that I think uh, uh, casual really did benefit from. So basically, it's just quick play, but you can only queue into the Valve servers, I think would be incredible. The other changes that would come with that include setting SV underscore pure to zero, which basically just lets you like turn on and off your HUD and view model if you want, uh, it lets you run like custom models, um, it lets you have sprays on. There, there are plenty of things that turning SV pure to zero, I think would fix. And uh, if, again, if it's a casual mode, I don't think you should be restricting what types of HUDs people are allowed to play with. That's always seemed a bit silly to me. And also, in the string of votes, I did remember two more that I think would be really, really fun to implement. Number one is a vote to turn all talk on. Uh, all talk basically meaning whenever you speak into comms, uh, the voice chat, the other team can hear it too. I think it's fine to keep it off by default, but if you're able to call a vote that the entire server can vote on, uh, I think that would be really, really fun. That is a feature that already exists on a lot of community modes, so if you're trying to argue like, oh, people would just use it to say slurs to the other team, like, no. Usually what happens is when the entire entire team or the entire server is able to talk to each other, the vibe is usually way more friendly. I, I very rarely see people getting angry like in all talk just because they, they look silly doing it. But just in case that is something that happens, I think we should also be able to call votes to mute people in addition to being able to kick them. And if all talk is enabled, then everyone on the server gets to vote whether or not they mute that person. Uh, muting them just makes it so they can't use voice chat or text chat. I think that's like a very fair thing to do, a very fair compromise if we bring back all chat and frankly something that 
that I'm just surprised we don't have already. Other changes that I think would be great for casual are number one, uh, letting every single map and mode in the game be played, or at least the officially supported ones. That means bringing stuff back like Cactus Canyon and Asteroid. I have missed those maps so much. They're a lot of fun. If you've never played Asteroid, I encourage you to. That means allowing an official section for arena mode. I know arena isn't the most fun, but I think uh, people have been working in ways to fix it, specifically letting you like still support your teammates when you're dead as Graveyard is done. I think if we let arena be in official mode and we reworked it a little bit, it would be a perfectly fine thing to have in casual. I don't see any issues there. And also, I would love for the miscellaneous modes and basically everything that's not in the quote-unquote core game mode section to be more accessible or at least somehow more promoted. I'm not going to sit here and like explain all my UI redesign ideas, but some way to make it so those modes aren't just completely shafted, I think would be ideal because a lot of the miscellaneous modes are actually a lot of fun. Um, I know DeGroot Keep and High Tower are the two like most played maps in that uh, the miscellaneous mode category, but um, like even stuff like Pastime, Manpower, like once you get the hang of it are a lot of fun. And uh, I wish the menu was set up in such a way where more people saw it and were willing to try it. I think eliminating queuing would help with that a lot because like the, the core dedicated audience would be able to just join in and play like a, even a six person server um, for as long as uh, the 45 minute timer was. So uh, I, ideally that would help with that as well, but I would love some UI redesigns and uh, I have some more ideas for that later, but uh, at least for the, the queuing section like that would be uh, that would be something that would benefit uh, casual a lot. And the final casual change that I'd want to see is letting people be able to play on event maps more than one month out of the year. There are plenty of Halloween maps that are really, really cool, and I wish they were in the official pool, but I understand like why they aren't just because like crit pumpkins and everything else can make uh, make the games a little bit crazy. So what I would suggest is that every time there is a full moon and Halloween mode is enabled, well, why not just let people queue for the Halloween maps? Why not add those to the queue pool for like three or so days? And uh, that way, if you want to play, you have to time, you have to like time it for a full moon, I guess, but you don't have to wait like 11 months. I think that's a really easy way to let otherwise really cool maps be playable more than just one specific time of the year. Christmas, you could argue needs the same, but um, I think most of the Christmas maps that are good have been added to the permanent pool, like Altitude, for instance. So I'm not too concerned about those, um, but maybe just to to take care of those, you could do like a Christmas in July type of thing where like for two weeks or so, everything's available. I don't know. There are plenty of ways to handle that, but uh, the, the general theme is that I don't want any map to be mostly or completely inaccessible. So those are my changes for casual. Overall, I think just making it a truly casual environment and bringing it back to what it used to be is ideal. Let's talk about competitive changes. These might be, I don't know if they're more controversial. I don't know how like dedicated the competitive scene is, but my goal with these changes is to make more people willing to get into competitive. I think competitive should be the mode where if you boot up TF2 and you want to like try really hard, that should be the mode that you queue into. Right now, casuals kind of absorbed the player base for that, which I don't think is to the benefit of casual. Um, I think that again, if you want to like try and you want to play on a server with coordinated teams, you should be able to, uh, to have a dedicated mode for that. And the competitive is right there. I've never understood why they've not made better use of this. What I'm not looking to do is I'm not looking to completely replace the current organized divisions. So stuff like uh, Sixes and Highlander that are run by networks like UGC, RGL. I don't think this competitive mode should replace those. Those are kind of set up as their own thing. Those have their own tight knit communities. I think this again should just be for players who want a challenge and uh, want to play in an organized setting, but also don't want to have to arrange like scrimmages and everything else. Basically just a halfway between what quick play currently is and what the uh, division leagues currently are. The way that I think we could do that is by making it essentially just 6v6, no restrictions. That's the rule set that we'd use. Um, obviously to do this, we would need a major map pull update. I have no idea why Turbine is or was ever in the competitive map pool. I don't even care if you don't play competitive. If you ever looked at Turbine before, even if you've ever seen a top-down view of Turbine before, you should understand that that does not belong in a competitive map pool. So making sure that the map pool is conducive to something that like the quote-unquote tryhards would actually want to play. I may try hard myself. I know what maps are good and not. 
Um, but I also think that the map pool should be split into three different modes that you have the ability to queue for, and it's not just a, when you press join competitive, you just get a random map. Because, the reason is, uh, Team Fortress 2 has nine classes, as you may know, uh, and those nine classes are very, very differently played in, uh, in the various competitive formats. For example, I can imagine Scout mains wanting to queue up for King of the Hill and 5CP a lot, but absolutely hating Payload, and I don't think they should have to suffer through payload maps uh, if they don't want to. So basically making so when you are queuing for competitive, there's like three checkboxes. You can choose whether you want to play 5CP, King of the Hill, and Payload. I think those should be the officially supported uh, competitive modes. And the only other thing you'd have to do to make competitive a really, really good and solid mode is to promote it more. If everyone's playing it and the queue times are low, I think a lot more people would want to try it. Team Fortress 2 desperately needs a mode that supports people who actually want to try, and I feel like casual is not suited for that. All we would need to do is make a few changes to competitive, and I feel like you would sort out both game modes completely. If you have more insight as to why people don't play competitive outside of the fact that queue times are long and the map pull is bad, please let me know. Uh, I don't have really any experience with it myself. Believe me, it's not for a lack of trying. I have sat in the queue for longer than I care to admit, but... Um, I am curious to know like if there's more things that needs change. But at the end of the day, well, the thing that I want to accomplish is to set the competitive, the official competitive mode up to be that kind of mode. And I think if we did that, we would solve so many of the problems that currently litter both casual and competitive. Moving on to man versus machine, I will admit that a lot of this is outside of my own realm of knowledge. I had to consult a lot of uh, high tour players for this, and uh, hopefully I've come up with something that is suitable for everyone, uh, because again, my the goal with my MVM changes are to make it not just extremely repetitive like it currently is and uh, to make more people want to try it. The biggest issue that I think MVM currently has, at least on a surface level, like once, once you get more into it, you could probably disagree, but um, it's the fact that only a single tour is worth completing. If you're not doing two cities, you're basically throwing. In an ideal world, every single MVM tour should have the same loot pool so people would want to queue up for it more. I think the only thing that determines what you would queue for, at least in man up mode, is personal preference, not the loot, not the cost, just personal preference. The way that we could do this is by basically consolidating the entire MVM loot pool into one. So uh, kind of like how it is in two cities right now, you would get one basic item, which could either be a basic kill streak kit or a low tier bot killer. You get one like better item, which is either a specialized kill streak kit or a high tier bot killer. And you also have a chance on every single tour of getting a professional kill streak kit or an Australian. So basically imagine what the current loot pool is for two cities, except add like basic, like the low tier bot killers in for uh, the first drop and the high tier bot killers in for the second drop. If we did that for every single tour, I think people would be a lot more willing to try a lot of them out because again, two cities, is fine. It gets a little bit repetitive though. And again, if you're not playing two cities, it is a complete waste of money. And uh, I think that should be the main thing that changes. Because we don't really need like that much new content. I think we could get away with just overhauling the current one. But right now, there's no reason to play any of the current content. So I think that would help fix it. The only other problem that that would present is that uh, the way that it's currently set up is that there are way more missions in the easier tours, which means that it actually costs more to enter because uh, you need one ticket per tour. There are six missions in, I think, Oil Spill and Steel Trap, I think is what those are called, and uh, that means that those cost $6 to enter, while the uh, the hardest one, which is Mecha Engine-ish, I'm not very familiar on my tour names, I'm sorry, but uh, that one only has three tours, so that would only cost $3 to enter. Because, again, I think the only thing dictating what you should queue for is personal preference, I think we should move away from a one ticket per mission model to a one ticket per tour model. So, like, let's say you buy a tour of duty pass off of the Manco store for $4. You redeem that on the tour you want to play, and then you have access to that entire tour until you finish it. That would go a long way in helping every single MVM mission be playable. It would help people, even, even the people who grind out MVM for a living, I'm sure would appreciate some sort of variety. And if they don't, 
Two Cities is completely unchanged. I mean, there are like bot killers and stuff, but uh, I, I think the, the cost evens out and still you're going for the Australians and the professional kill streak kits. I don't think the lower, the low tier loot would uh, would throw a wrench into that, a bot killer wrench into that, if you will. But this is a change that I would love to hear some feedback from uh, some more MVM players. I've asked a few of them and every single one that I've asked said that uh, that change sounds really good to them. So if you have a contrary opinion, if you don't think this would work, please let me know why. But but until I hear a very convincing argument otherwise, I would absolutely love for every single piece of content in MVM to be equally viable to play. The rest of the stuff with MVM is pretty minor. Um, I think just fixing a lot of the bugs like upgrade blocking, uh, bots getting stuck, random stuff like that would go a long way. It's kind of stupid that MVM has to deal with stuff like that in general and uh, just fixing it so trolls can't completely ruin the experience I think would help a lot of uh, new people be willing to try the mode out a lot more once that reputation kind of ends. And uh, also, I will say that balance changes probably are a good idea for MVM, but I'm not going to tell you which ones they are. I don't know. Go ask like Wheezy if you want to know more about that. Um, he's like an MVM YouTuber if you've never heard of him. Pretty good. Um, but I am I am not touching any of that with a 10 foot pole just because I don't I don't know enough about MVM to give specific balance suggestions. So those are all of my changes for the big three officially supported modes, but there are a few for the other ones within the menu. Um, for instance, for the community browser, I would love to see there be like standardized tags uh, for community game modes. Right now, searching modes is a little bit hard. And uh, like, for instance, if I want to play Class Wars, like some servers run the tag Class Wars, all one word. Some people run the tag Class underscore Wars. It's really stupid that searching is that hard. So I think making some kind of standardization, even if it's something that the community themselves can make up and Valve just like shows as a recommendation when you're hosting a server, it's like that would uh, that would go a long way. But um, something to make searchability a little bit more. Also, fix the history tab because it doesn't work at all right now. Um, if you want to like add a server to your favorites that you just played, it's really really stupidly hard to find that. So I, I obviously would love for that to be something that's fixed. And finally, make the simplified server list a little bit better. Um, for those wondering, this is what the normal server list looks like, and this is what simplified looks like. I think simplified is what you should be showing to new players uh, if you're opening the server browser for the first time just because in a day and age where server browsers aren't commonplace it can definitely get a little bit overwhelming and when you see this giant block of text as like a, a 15 year old and you've just played a video game for the first time so I think showing a list of all the servers and also not grouping them into maps because like as we've learned from the quick play days not every server running the same map is going to be the same um, I don't want to have to gamble whether I'm dealing with like our TD and a bunch of weird furry plugins every time I queue up for two for it. I want to know like, yes, this is the tags the server is running. This is what I'm getting myself into. But um, if you're displaying it as like blocks of text, even just like, again, make the map thumbnails work. It's not even like that big of a, a change that you'd have to uh, to make. Just give more information to this list because, again, it is a little bit more visually appealing than just text. And I feel like a lot more new players who've never encountered a server browser would be willing to try stuff on there and wouldn't be overwhelmed. I think the biggest issue with the server browser is just the lack of people like willing to try it. And um, that's kind of my, my solution to that is just updating the UI a little bit. Training mode. Um, I'll put it bluntly. Fucking sucks. Uh, there's no reason to ever play play training mode, even if you're a new player, it's not teaching you anything. So obviously something is going to need to be done about it because the way that it currently is and has been for the entire time the game has been out is horrible. I don't want to go too heavily into this because I want to make this its own video at some point, but um, I think a couple things that training mode could use are number one, just a single good mission for each class that actually teaches you about the class's mechanics. Number two, be more of a required thing for new players. Again, assuming you actually make the, uh, the training modes good, I think this actually would benefit new players a lot because there is a lot of uh, mechanics to learn. Uh, number three, go in depth about some of the more advanced mechanics, uh, like rocket jumping, for instance. Rocket jumping is nowhere to be found in the soldier training mode, but it's very, very important when you actually play the class. And number four, include like some alternative play styles too. Like for instance, give uh, give sniper a huntsman training mission. There's plenty you can do with training. Again, I want to make a video talking about all of my ideas for that specific mode later because I think it is the biggest miss potential 
in the entirety of Team Fortress 2. Uh, well, okay, maybe maybe that's a stretch. I think competitive is, but uh, training training is definitely up there, and um, I think making that good is, should be a high priority if you want to draw in new players. And last but not least in the find a game menu is create a server, and yes, I do have things to say about this. Um, even though the entire thing is just a way to let you play on your own PC, I think it would be really, really nice, again, just for the sake of new players, if nothing else, if uh, in the little GUI that opened up when you're creating the new servers, if you could have little toggle boxes for uh, server CVARs. For instance, if you want to set SV underscore gravity to like 400, then uh, you check a box that says low gravity. You don't even have to like let new players enter in exact values because I feel like by the time you know what exact values you want to enter, you'll, you'll just do it in the console yourself. But um, like when you're making a new server, it would be really cool if you had a bunch of like weird server settings like that that you could play with. Um, a lot of stuff that's like common tags, like a, a checkbox that's like disable respawn times. Um, you select the map you want to run. You set, I think the, the map and the timer are what you get to set right now, which is not much. Um, you set whether you want the server to like appear in the server browser, and which should be off by default. You should not let people do that without fair warning that it's not a good idea. Um, you should determine whether you want to like turn cheats on. So plenty of stuff that uh, you could do just to let new players have an easier time creating servers because there is a lot of console commands that you have to learn. I don't think like booting up two fort and screwing around with a friend should have that high of a barrier for entry. So even on a mode that's not even really a mode, I think uh, there are improvements to be made. So anyway, sorry that that was a lot, but again, I think that this is like the, uh, the things that should be updated the most if you're going to give Team Fortress 2 one final update. Making competitive and casual and MVM all three modes as playable as they can be, should be priority number one for Team Fortress 2's last update. And I think the changes that I suggest would solve, hopefully, a lot of the problems. So before we get into some bigger meat and potatoes, uh, let's talk about a few small things that I think certainly could be updated. First of all, menu changes. I talked about like unburying the uh, the miscellaneous game mode section on the casual menu, but there are just some more with the menus overall that I think could be better. Number one, I would love for the old like pre meet your match menu to come back. That was amazing. That menu functioned for everything it needed to do. I have no idea why they made it this weird slide out menu that's buried. Please don't fall for the trap of like modern game UI, which is usually garbage. Bring back the old menu. And now just like, if, if you really want to keep the slide out menu, have find a game, just bring out the slide out menu. Don't have it be this weird button in the corner. I've never understood what the current UI is even doing. It feel like you can tell that it is just two different UIs mashed together. Um, I know Valve wants to sell their taunts, but like just uh, what do we need this? Do we need this drawer right here? Um, I also don't need to see all of my friends that are currently playing the game because I feel like if I actually want to play a game with a friend that you have Discord, you have even Steam chat for that, you don't need a way to access that on TF2's menu. Bring back this old menu. It was perfect the way it was. If you wanted to do anything, just leave in the top bar minus the find a game button and we're good. Literally nothing else needs to be changed. Actually, no, it's not perfect. There is one more thing. Um, in the casual menu, bring back the sketches instead of using the source filmmaker posters for each game mode. Look at these sketches. These had so much character. I have no idea why we stopped using these. I, you may be like criticizing and saying like, oh, all your changes just want to make the game old again. But again, the way that it was pre meet your match was incredible. Meet your match was probably one of the worst updates TF2 has ever had. So yes, if I'm saying we only get one update in the, uh, the rest of Team Fortress 2's lifespan, it sure is hell going to be undoing a lot of the garbage that that caused. Another thing that is technically a menu change, I guess it's more UI, but uh, is on a lot of weapons, the actual stats of the weapon are misrepresented. Either there are like hidden stats, what's listed is like kind of wrong, there's just nothing listed at all in the, like the case of the Huntsman. I think rewriting a lot of uh, a lot of the weapon descriptions to be more accurate to what the weapon actually does, showing all the hidden stats. I made an entire video about this, but I think implementing that into the actual UI would be really, really good. So that's all the menu changes. Moving on to something um, touchy, this is balance changes, and uh, what I want to say is that I don't think suggesting any specific balance changes, assuming this is truly the last update, is a good idea, because you have to assume that whatever changes you're making are 
perfect. Otherwise, even if you like do fix some problematic weapons, you could cause another problem by suggesting anything but the most boring changes imaginable. So what I want to suggest instead of just having a single balance patch, which you can have that. I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to having a like a single balance patch, which only has like minor buffs and basically no nerfs is you have a way for the community themselves to suggest, test, and vote on whether certain balance changes should be in the game. Now, I know a lot of you just had an aneurysm. You had flashbacks to the front page of r slash TF2. Don't worry. I have a specific way that I think this could be implemented that uh, filters out a lot of the, uh, the bad quality suggestions, and uh, I'll get to that in a minute. But I think leaving balance in the hands of the community as something that can change if the community wants it to, but doesn't necessarily have to, is the best way to handle balance moving forward. Otherwise, if you suggest a single balance patch, you are placing way too much confidence in your own changes, assuming they are completely perfect that I don't think is warranted. All right, this is where we get to the good stuff, the content updates. This is new things that are being added from scratch in the Team Fortress 2 that I would love to see for like a final update. This could be literally any amount of things. Like, again, if we only get to pick one update's worth of stuff, it's you're never going to get literally everything. But um, I think in this scenario, there are a couple things I think would uh, would make for kind of a cool, uh, a cool finale. So obviously you get the usual stuff. You get like new maps and cosmetics and everything that normally is included in like a, uh, a standard modern update anyway, or at least a, a patch. I wouldn't, I don't feel good calling them updates, but uh, yeah, just new maps and cosmetics and whatever else you can pull off the workshop. I would love to see some Valve maps as well. Uh, the last batch of Valve maps that we got, which were during Jungle Inferno, which was like Mercenary Park and Enclosure, are beautiful maps. Balance of those maps aside, they're they're really, really nice looking, and I would love for the, uh, the Valve TF2 map makers to come back out of retirement and make some more. However, what I would love to see for a final batch of like workshop cosmetics and stuff is something that is directly influenced by workshop votes. So what you could do is like uh, a month before the update is you could say like, hey, this is going to be the final update. Like we're, we're just telling you this now. We are leaving everything on the workshop up to a vote. We are going to add like the five highest voted maps. We're going to add like the uh, the, the like 20 or whatever highest voted cosmetics. And this is uh, this is what you can vote on. I think doing it that way is the most fair way to do a final update uh, out of anything. Because it's like, if, if you have the uh, the janitor handpick all the maps and whatever he wants, it's never going to be satisfying for everyone. Democracy has its flaws, but in this instance, I think it's the uh, the most fair way to handle it. Just to add a little bit more flair, uh, I would love to see some new weapons as well. New weapons are tricky to add because uh, they're usually going to require some sort of like post edition balancing. It's rare that you get it right on the first try, but um, if we're doing that, it's like I would love to see at least like one or two new weapons for every class that uh, ideally would add like an alternate playstyle. I think those are the best ones. I'm not going to suggest what those weapons would be because again, there is literally an in infinite amount of things that uh, that could fulfill those roles, but I think at least they should be trying to fill out underused weapon slots with what they add. So like Engineer desperately needs secondaries, Soldier does not desperately need primaries, so it's like assuming they were smart about what they're adding, uh, new weapons for every class would be an amazing addition that I think would give the game at least several more years of longevity if nothing else. In this hypothetical final update, I would also love to see at least one more new contract campaign. The contracts that were added for Jungle Inferno were, in my opinion, really, really fun. At least for the like six months or however long I was doing them for, probably not that wrong, but um, it gave me an incentive to like log in the TF2 every day and just play for a few hours. And uh, not only did I play for a few hours, but I was also focused on like playing well. And it's like, I, I feel like during that amount of time, like immediately after Jungle Inferno, matches just seem to be a lot more... I'm not going to say balance, but it's like, yeah, there, there just seemed to be a lot better competition. People seem to be like giving it their all. So just because of that, I think there should be two more like contract missions, very similar to what they did during the, uh, the Pyro Land one. Um, even if they wanted to make the Pyro Land contracts unavailable and just reuse a lot of that, I think that wouldn't even be the worst idea. But like, yeah, add some new like war paints or whatever. Uh, let, uh, let the contract rewards be the new things that are added, like the new hats or whatever. And uh, I think that's a great way to not only encourage 
encourage people to play on the new maps and stuff, but um, also just play regularly. I, I know that if I have an incentive to log on every day, I'm going to do it way more than just if, uh, if it's whatever it is now. And frankly, in a game like TF2 where anything to increase the player count helps a ton, that's going to be necessary. And again, this is assuming like bots are fixed, um, assuming that you can't just farm it forever. I don't know. You'd have to implement some ways that it's not like abusable, but uh, I think, yeah, stuff like that would be great. The other thing that I'm going to suggest with contracts is please make them able to be turned in mid-round. If we're making the uh, the new system like Quick Play, there's no reason to not just let people turn them in whenever they want. Even if it's like, oh, well, people might leave mid-match. Well, yeah, the, the idea is that the new Quick Play allows people to, like, drop in in the middle of a match more easily, so it doesn't matter if one person leaves after they complete their contracts because, uh, like, yeah, you, they're gonna get replaced. So, that's, I think, assuming we did the new uh, the new casual features would be an obsoleted uh, thing that I think would be easy and very very nice to fix and even though there are plenty of things that I could go on and suggest the final content update that I think is the most important for the longevity of Team Fortress 2 is adding what I would like to call an experimental game mode experimental is the mode that I was talking about earlier that hands over not only just game balancing but also like new maps and new like weapons to be added to the actual community instead of having valve handpicked them. So here's how I imagine a mode like this working. At the beginning, a bunch of people who either have like a certain amount of hours in the game or have like a certain casual or competitive level receive a pass that allows them to suggest balance changes for specific weapons and also vote on existing changes. During a single cycle of the experimental mode, which we'll say is like either going to be two or three months or whatever, you would be able to play with a modified version of an existing weapon that is a rebalance that has been suggested by a community member. Um, you're able to vote on whether you think that rebalance should be added added to the actual game, and uh, you're also able to play on new maps and stuff, but like only with the current weapons, and uh, you're able to vote whether you think those maps should be added to casual. If a weapon rebalance receives, we'll say like a 75% positive vote for its rebalance, that update automatically gets patched into the game at the end of the two or three month cycle. That way, you have continuous rebalancing for weapons, you don't have to worry about Valve suggesting really weird changes, uh, you get to play with stuff that are suggested by trusted community members. It's not a fully fleshed out idea yet, I will admit there are some flaws, but I think a mode like this that allows the Team Fortress 2 players, specifically the ones that aren't going to suggest like uh, TF2 Reddit tier suggestions, uh, suggest and vote on weapon ideas would be really, really beneficial to the longevity of the mode. You could probably get away without it. You could have this happen exactly once with like TF2's final balance update. Again, even if you only made this like an, a temporary mode that lasted like six months before the final update and then whatever it is at the uh, the end of that six months is just what you get for the rest of TF2's life. Maybe you could do that, but something that allows continuous rebalancing of weapons I think would be really cool. Again, it's going to have a lot of problems that I have to work out. It's not like a perfect mode, but if you either have suggestions on how to improve this mode or if if you think this is something that's doomed from the start, please let me know. I am very curious to receive feedback on this mode in particular. I always have assumed that uh, the best way to handle a quote-unquote final update would be to essentially just pass the torch onto the community at large because that's what's keeping the game alive as it is. And uh, a game mode like this, in my opinion, would be the best way to handle a lot of stuff like that. So to kind of wind down to something a lot more trivial, let's talk about some items that I think need to be updated. These aren't going to be like weapon balances. These are just going to be like uh, changes that I think the cosmetic side of items should include because there are plenty. Um, the, the system that we currently have has some very weird quirks that I think should be ironed out before the game officially is completed. So first of all, every single weapon in the game, in my opinion, should have a strange variant. I have no idea why we don't have this already. It's a very easy thing to implement, and if you do it correctly, it's not even going going to screw over collectors. All you would have to do is add in an item, whether it's something you buy off the Manco store or you like craft it with refined metal, that is a universal strangifier. You can apply it to any non-skinned weapon and immediately make it strange. And there you go. That's an easy way to get every single weapon, weapon and reskin, literally everything in the game strange. Now, the concern that I know some people would have, or at least the two concerns, are number one, some weapons don't really have good metrics to track, so what would making them strange even do? Um, I disagree. I think every single weapon in the game could have at least some kind of metric that makes sense. Uh, like on the gunboats, for instance. If you wanted to make the metric tracked like time rocket jumping or like damage absorbed, you, you can think a little bit outside the box. It doesn't just have to be kills, but 
but uh, the ability to strangeify every single weapon that doesn't have one, I think, would be huge. The other concern that people have is that, uh, well, some stranges are currently very, very expensive, and if you add a universal strangifier, it devalues all my expensive stranges that I've spent thousands of dollars to collect. Well, all you would have to do is any strange that was currently unboxed from a salvage crate or in any of the crate 90 somethings, because I know a couple of those had like a 1% chance to get a uh, an expensive strange. All of those you add the vintage quality to and you give it the effect community sparkle. And there you go. Demand for those weapons stays extremely high because now they actually have real value over the new strangeified weapons. Collectors have like something to show off. They have something to flex. And all of the plebeians have access to a very very basic item quality of a weapon that really should not be locked behind a $200 paywall. It would be incredibly easy to add something like this and it would also solve another problem potentially depending on how you implemented it, which is a refined metal sink. The TF2 economy has been in shambles for years with Manco keys almost approaching 100 refined metal. I would not be surprised if they got to that level. The reason is because there's currently nothing to spend refined metal on. Uh, if you have refined metal, you can basically do what? Craft hats with it, which no one wants to do. Um, the, the crafting system with refined is just really, really bad, so the only thing that people end up doing with it is trading it for keys, which doesn't really get rid of it from the economy. It just kind of throws it into someone else's inventory, so the refined metal inflation problem is something that I think definitely needs to be solved for the, uh, the long-term health of the economy. One easy solution is to make the new strangifiers cost like 100 refined metal to craft. I think that's like, that's what, two keys? About five bucks? Actually, I think that's only like three bucks now, but that would go up very quickly as uh, as time went on. So that that's one way to do it. Um, maybe you could do like another golden wrench type of thing, which was, uh, for those not aware, uh, back in the day, every time someone crafted a hat, there was an event where you had like a 0.01% chance to get the golden wrench instead, um, which required you to spend refined metal on hats. Uh, there were only like a hundred of them distributed. They were a cool collector's item. I don't know if something like that would work as well nowadays just because of how much refined metal there is floating around in the system, but that is an option, I suppose. Um, and the final option, which I think is a fantastic idea, is a weapon type called New Zealandium, is uh, what, I, what I've what i usually heard it referred to as. Basically, just think a silver Australian weapon that you can craft using, like, let's say 200 refined metal. Every time you spend that 200 refined metal, it gives you a completely random New Zealandium, that's hard to say, a New Zealandium weapon of unique quality. And uh, it also has, like, let's say a 10% chance for that weapon to be strange, so the strange of fires would work on that. That is a really easy way to get people to spend a lot of refined metal very, very quickly. Basically just a silver version of an Australium that um, you can like have in unique quality, just an Australium light. I think that would fit the game's art style pretty well. Maybe if you wanted to have these stand out from Australiums more, or I guess more accurately, if you wanted Australiums to stand out from these more, uh, you could have the uh, the reflectivity on New, Ze New, New Zealandiums be really, really low. So that way it's not like a shiny silver weapon, it's just kind of like metal, because I mean that is kind of what you're crafting them from anyway. But there are plenty of ways to handle that, and uh, even though a lot of them would be crafted very, very quickly, I think just because of how many people would be spending a ton of refined metal at the same time, that would be an easy way to handle them. And all you would have to do is add a new crafting recipe, reskin all of the existing Australian weapons to be silver instead of gold, and you'd be done. It's not even like this would be this massive undertaking on Valve's part. It would take them maybe a couple work days and they'd be done with it. But even if you don't like those specific ideas for refined sinks, I think adding something for refined metal to be spent on long term would be good. And uh, again, if you have any suggestions, please let me know. But uh, those I think would be the easiest to implement on Valve's end. Also, I would absolutely love if they made it so every single weapon in the game could have war paints and festivizers applied to them. Right now, it's like really arbitrary which ones can and can't. So just making it so all of them can would be easy. I'm not sure about like weird contracting issues. I've heard rumors that like the reason some of them can't like, uh, for instance, the Rift weapons are because, well, those are licensed to another game and Valve is just borrowing the idea. So, like, they're they're technically not allowed to make money for them. But that also kind of ignores that they made strangifiers for the Gordbort weapons and apparently that got around the issue. So, I don't, I don't know how this would be any different. But um, e even the weapons that, like, aren't licensed, that they're, they just 
can't have uh, war paints applied to, being able to have them would be nice. I I really can't fathom what the uh, what the thought process was for that. And also in the same vein, adding new Australiums. Uh, I think Wheezy TF2 did a really good video on new Australium variants that should be added. I have my own opinions. I won't go through them here just because I'm already like an hour into the recording and I don't want to make this any longer. But uh, making it so there are a lot more Australiums that you can play the new MVM mode for, I think would be really, really cool. And uh, again, it's not even like it's uh, something that's going to take huge time and effort on Valve's end. They just pull a couple weapons, retexture some of the areas to make them gold instead of gray, and there you go. Very easy content update that people would pay thousands of dollars for for some reason. And finally, I will suggest, and yes, this is a serious suggestion, not just a meme, that they should add new weapon reskins. The reason is because there are a lot of really, really cool weapon models currently on the workshop that otherwise will never see the light of day. All it would take is to add those in to like maybe a new crate or something where you can unbox a bunch of like new free skins. Ideally, you'd have these weapons be reskins of items that like are commonly used. Uh, so like the Iron Bomber, for instance, is a very popular grenade launcher, but I'm, I'm kind of tired of seeing the Iron Bomber because like everyone uses it. So just make a reskin. Very easy way to uh, give community creators some, uh, some credit uh, to get their stuff in the game, to visually vary up the game a little bit, and uh, because weapon reskins in TF2 have always seemed like a strange- Anyway, the last idea for an item change is one that you may have never thought of before, but it is the, uh, the badges that show your join date, the mercenary hire badges. I think that they should redo those to better encapsulate the history of the game, just kind of as a reward for people who've been playing for a very long time. It doesn't make sense that the only people who get special medals played in the first, like, year or two of the game, when everyone else who's already still been playing for, like, 10 plus years have the same badge as people who just joined. Um, I think if we had to categorize those, we would make it so anyone who played before the free-to-play update gets, like, the Grizzled Veteran or the Platinum Badge. Anyone who played before Gun Metal gets the Gold Badge. Anyone who played before Jungle Inferno gets the Silver Badge. And anyone who played after TF2 stopped receiving updates gets the Bronze Badge. And just to kind of commemorate the people who already had the badges just so they can still feel special, they get the Grizzled Veteran, but, uh, they have Community Sparkle on theirs just to show that they were, like, the real OGs. So last, but uh, I mean, probably least if we're being honest, these are just miscellaneous changes that I couldn't really fit into any other category. Uh, these are overall minor stuff that wouldn't really need to be changed, but I think would be really, really cool if, uh, if I was allowed to add anything that I wanted to an update. First of all, give Scout blue pants. Why Why did Shonik make the video on this? I'm never going to unsee this. This was a cognito hazard. He was better off never revealing this to the world. It's going to bother millions, and now the only correct action on Valve's part is to make Scout's pants the correct color after 16 years. On a more serious note, I think that uh, modding the game should be a more straightforward process. Uh, so kind of like what Minecraft mods do, where you can just click a button like on the main menu that opens a mods folder. I think TF2 would be very beneficial for doing the same. Right now, if I want to add like a custom skin to one of my weapons, there is a massive barrier for entry that I think just turns a lot of new players off from doing it. And uh, the more moddable we make this game, in my opinion, the longer it's going to last. So we should uh, we should focus a lot of efforts toward doing that. I would love to have a sniper voice command. Uh, right now, there are a lot of voice commands that don't really do anything. And there's also an open slot on a lot of the menus. If we allowed people to, uh, to call for a sniper, I think that would solve a lot of issues like balancing aside. And that uh, would just be a nice little detail nonetheless. The best part is that they wouldn't even have to get voice actors to record new lines because in Man vs. Machine, there's already an automatic call out for snipers. So all you'd have to do is tie that to a voice key. And I would absolutely love if they optimized this game a little bit more so spy mains wouldn't have to play on Nintendo 64 graphics. Or if they're not going to optimize the game, at least overhaul the graphics, but that's like way too much work. So optimization is probably the way to go. Anyway, if Team Fortress 2 could receive one final update, this is at least most of the things I would love to see. Sorry that it was a lot of rambling. I just thought that this would be a, a fun video to make because I've had a lot of these ideas ever since even Save TF2. These have kind of been building up in my head, so I want to get them out. And uh, if you have any extra ideas or critiques on my own, I would love to hear them. So put them in a comment and uh, well, I'll go through them and maybe respond to the ones that I think are cool. Anyway, thanks for watching the entire thing. Better videos to come soon. And yeah, that's it. Bye.